Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another Celebrating Act 2 episode with Michelle Fabrega, our love and relationship coach, and my partner, John Coleman. <laughs> hey, partner. Uh, you know, Michelle, <laughs> it, it, Art says partner, but it's interesting because we were friends first and mm. then decided to go into business. And so I, I think a big part of our business relationship is the fact that we are friends. And friendship, you know, I've worked in lots of different places and different companies. You you have friends that you make in a business, you know, in the office or wherever, but they're not always the same kind of friends as Art and I are. So friendship is different. Um, there are different, where am I going with this? <laughs> Don't know, John. It's important, but there's different <laughs> kinds of friends, aren't there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that, um, you know, you know, obviously, you know, my specialty is in love and relationships and, you know, friendships are part of that. So I think that we tend to think of them as sort of a separate thing, but I think, you know, they're part of our human, the, the richness of being human and being connected to others. And, you know, sometimes we have friends that we've known for a really long time, either as an individual or as a couple. And, you know, those long lasting friendships can be really joyful to know each other over the long haul and the ups and downs. And, you know, I'm really an advocate for, you know, keeping friendships and connections going and building new ones, you know, as life changes as well. But to, you know, maintain them, because I think sometimes I see with couples is they can allow themselves to get kind of isolated from other people. And um, sometimes it's just one of the people in the couple who will, you know, just hang back from their friends and just, you know, hang out in the couple and um, it, it let other relationships slide. And it's just, it's something to, to notice because, you know, one relationship obviously is not enough for any given person, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And and you mentioned couples. It's interesting because, um, you know, I, I, I there isn't a couple that I know I've ever known where they are both friends with all their friends. Do, do you know what I mean? And she's got her friends, he's got her his friends, and then they have their friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not all the same. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. You're right. And you're right. Uh, uh, sometimes the partner can't tolerate certain of your uh, of their friends. Uh, right. But I want to go. I want to circle back uh, to what uh, uh, John was talking about a little bit earlier about our friendship, and uh, it just caused me to think of uh, most of my uh, uh, people that I really enjoy the most are people that I can laugh with. And yes. uh, even though John and I both grew up in the New York area didn't know each other back there. So I guess that has some of the potential sensibility to uh, humor and things like that. Uh, John just has a incredibly great sense of humor. Uh, there's virtually, I don't think we've ever had conversations for more than 10 or 15 minutes uh, that didn't include uh, something we made each other laugh with. We both have, yep. we, we are both self-deprecating for good reason. We're good at it and we earned it. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we have that in common. I find that with most uh, uh, good friendships, uh, people can laugh together. Now, I'm sure there's the people yeah. who are who, who ha have a bond uh, from something that terrible happened. But for most enduring friendships, I think uh, humor uh, and mm -hmm. being able to make each other laugh is very important. And uh, John does that for me. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I mean, I think that I agree with you. And I think obviously in a relationship too, you know, in a love relationship, humor is really important that way. Um, but I think that it's just what I want to emphasize here is just about the priority that friendships need ought to have in your life, because we might think that, oh, you know, we're busy or whatever. And, um, you know, things can kind of slide away. But it, there is, you know, obviously friendships shift and change over time. There's the saying about, you know, people come into your life for a reason a season or a lifetime, right? And so it's honoring those connections that you have, and and you know it's um it's 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 a worthy endeavor to remind yourself that you know it's not just your partner, it's not just who you're dating, but your other people in your life because they're they're going to be with you often, you know, longer sometimes than than a partner sometimes, right? Mm. Sure, I I think back to. Uh, um, 
high school, college friends long before I met my wife. You know, we're still friends. We still keep in touch. Maybe not very often because we're across the country from each other. But uh, you're right. They go back. Those relationships go back longer than my marriage. And, and also, John, uh, I, I know I'm pretty sure it's true of you because I actually know some of your boyhood friends because they're regular contributors of ours <laughs> from time to time. <laughs> and so you have That's wonderful right. relationships, which I know you maintain now. But I find that I, some of those relationships that I have that go back 50 years in the last 30 years, maybe we only spoke every two years just because of, you know, distance and everything else. But when we picked up the the phone and was speaking to each other, it's like we pick up from the day before was the last conversation <laughs> we have. It just goes on. <laughs> we'll see each other, we'll speak to each other for another two years, and the same thing happens. Uh, it's yeah. just there's something that's rooted in that. Because I, I don't know, it's a little far people what we're talking about here, but those, I guess that's the, the substance of relationships for me. Mm. Well, Michelle, yeah. you mentioned uh, you mentioned uh, w you know why people become friends. I think some of it is just shared relationships. Mm. I'm thinking of my high school friends. Yeah. We still keep in touch. And uh, um, what did we have in common? Well, we we maybe humor, maybe we like the same things, mm. but mostly it was we were in the same room. <laughs> five right, days like a, a week shared experience, years. right? Yeah. Shared circumstances, yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you were in the room where it happened. <laughs> well, yeah. you know what I think it is? I, I, it's not just, I, I started to say shared experience. Uh, that's it. That's part of it. But you can also, you the shared experience gives you an opportunity to find out who somebody is, whether you like them or not like them. You can sit in the same room with people for four years and learn to not like them as much as you can learn to like them, to appreciate their personalities. So it's really getting to know somebody. Friendship is a relationship that's really important to us. Mm, yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, not our relationships and friendships last, right? And sometimes, you know, your interests change or, you know, you used to go to bars together and now you're, you know, not drinking anymore. You know, sometimes you have to look, can we forge a new path together? Is there something else we can do together to, you know, maybe you used to work together and then now, you know, maybe if you're not working now or one of you is and the, the other isn't, there's a totally different rhythm, yes. but um, it's important to look at, you know, wow, what's the, what's the richness here? And is it, can we preserve this? Can we move forward together? And sometimes, you know, people drift apart and, you know, and that's okay too. It's not like every friendship should be maintained forever, nor should every relationship last forever, but it's something to prioritize to see like how we can, um, you know, uh, maintain those, those special connections that they, they give our lives richness and they help us, um, you know, see ourselves better. You, you mentioned something earlier about um, uh, happiness, that friendships are important for us to grow and be happy. Is that, do I have that correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, certainly during the pandemic, right, a lot of people are more isolated and they're less connected to other people. They're not seeing other people as much. And I mean, isolation can lead to depression. I mean, it's just we're, we humans are social creatures. You know, we're primates. We are meant to be connected to others. We're meant to be close to others. And that's part of just our own survival, really, you know, but even emotionally, we need that. And so it's it's very important. And it, it's some of us are more, um, you know, comfortable making friends or more, it, it's, you know, happens easier. And some of us, maybe if we're more introverted, let's say, it, it's it's a little more challenging to kind of put yourself out there and, you know, connect with people. But it's just, um, I, I encourage people to, you know, push past that discomfort and reach out and reach yeah. back to someone you used to know and, and keep those connections going. You know, I think that's a, a really important topic because um, Celebrating Act Two, of course, is aimed at everybody over 50. But as you reach the upper stages of life, the elderly, you become elderly, it's not an uncommon problem for people to isolate themselves. Mm -hmm. um, they, I don't know what, they. Get, I'm not there, so I don't know, but it, I would think they just get anxiety about meeting new people or getting out of the house or something like that. And that, 
friendships are really important at that age. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and some people find that, you know, some of their friends are moving away, you know, or people are, you know, passing away. And so it's, it's actually really important to cultivate friends of all ages. And it's like, how do you do that? Well, you know, there's different ways to get involved in different community activities or, you know, volunteer opportunities. Maybe it's with, you know, friends, daughter or son, you, I don't know, you know, you find ways to stay connected to new people because there's vibrancy in, you know, young, in the young, right? In the in youth. And so it's like, we also keep learning about ourselves. I mean, just because we're a certain age doesn't mean we don't also enjoy, you know, things that a younger person might enjoy. So, you know, whether it's movies or whatever. So I just, it's, it's vital actually to stay, not just, you know, they kind of, um, the way our, school goes it's like we're lockstep with the same age this cohort but once we get you know we're out of school we get conjoined you know in all kinds of age groups right right mm. right this is this is great advice for more on celebrating act two visit our webpage follow us on facebook subscribe to us on youtube and tell your friends celebrating act two is the user manual for the second half of your life